I am here with filmmaker Tim Brown, who is director and the um, co-producer and writer of a very interesting co-production film called Buckley's Chance. And um, I'm really pleased to talk to you on the other side of the world, Tim. Yeah, yeah. Thanks Tell us where me. you're at right now. Uh, I'm in the Cayman Islands preparing uh, an, an, a, a film that I'm going to direct on starting on Friday with uh, Nick Cage and uh, Ron Perlman and Jackie, uh, Jackie Earl Haley, it's, uh, numerous other uh, great actors, Ernie Hudson. So, yeah, we're very excited to uh, start production on, uh, yeah, Friday for six weeks. Oh, my God, that sounds really exciting. That's that's a, mm. an interesting cast in itself there, too. Yeah, 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 it is, it is a great cast. And it's good to be working, isn't it, again? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's always good to be working. So, yeah, I haven't really slowed down through the COVID. You get to, you get to write and do other things that I do on my own. So, it's, uh, it's, it's nice to be able to, very, very grateful to be able to keep, keep going. Well, Tim, you, you know, you've, well, you um got a very, you know, sort of long career already about 30 years from what I've read. And, mm -hmm. um, and you've embarked on, you know, obviously, with the film that's about to be released, um, Buckley's Chance. So I, yeah. you know, and again, an interesting cast. Um, and you know, with starring one of my favourites, Bill Knightley, um, and, you know, and some really other um, familiar Australian um, actors in it. And I would love you to, you know, tell us about the film and how you came, you know, about with the co-production. Yeah, I had an idea for the picture and um, I sort of wanted to make a little more of a, uh, a grown-up movie. I'd done a lot of kids' films and my writing partner and I, a guy named Will Wenekers, uh, I had an idea about a uh, about a boy whose father dies and he moves to uh, the middle of the Australian outback with his estranged grandfather who he's never met. Um, and, and basically, I wanted to sort of tell this fish out of water story and 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 have him get lost in the middle of the outback in an environment that he's completely unaccustomed to. And uh, he befriends a dingo, and uh, him and the dingo sort of survive together and. Through the journey of survival, he learns to overcome the loss of his father and deal with that. And of course, the grandfather, who, who didn't particularly like him when he got there, learns to um, to sort of also overcome his issues with his own son, who he had lost mm -hmm. as well. And, and really, the film is about perspective. A, a mother, uh, a wife loses a husband, a son loses a father, and a father loses a son, all of whom come with a different perspective uh, mm -hmm. of what that emotion is like. And when the three of them meet, they all they all sort of uh, clash with one another until the boy gets lost, and his journey back uh, helps them all sort of realize what they're losing together, and uh, and overcome it. Oh, it it sounds endearing, and you know, and and a really you know good Aussie sort of background story, which I believe was shot in West Australia. Uh, it was actually we shot in Broken Hill in New South Wales, right oh. on the border of South Australia. Okay. Um, uh, and so nice. Broken Hill is, I think, about a two-hour flight north, northeast of uh, northwest of uh, Sydney. And uh, yeah, we we was uh, great. I lived there for two months in the middle of the outback, and I uh, embraced it uh, wholeheartedly. How and um, when was that um, produced? How long ago? We we shot it in uh, about two years ago now roughly yeah. end of may i think through the month of june uh mm. in 2019 and we wrapped and, and, and during post-production we COVID hit and slowed things down from a distribution perspective and yeah. we're lucky now to be working with transmission films on the theatrical release on june the 24th in australia um, yeah great distributor um mm. very good well it, isn't it lucky that yeah you got towards the end of it and with the COVID, because, oh, God, it was, yeah, it was a strange time, wasn't it? Mm, yeah, very much so. With what was, can you tell me the, um, you know, the budget of the film at all? Uh, well, you know, the, the budget was uh, about, about roughly about six, seven, seven million dollars, roughly. That's, that's really amazing. 
for yeah yeah yeah, yeah it, was, it was certainly uh it was certainly a solid budget for sure based on the based on the uh, on the production we put together absolutely uh, yeah yeah with you with the, yeah with the whole value of the production are you mm. you finding you know obviously you know nowadays in particular you know you you have to angle yourself at making you know sort of production values and budgets around you know sort of the five you know to eight million uh, say that again in terms of you know budgeting films nowadays you know is it you know keeping it as into a low budget film um you know because you know budgets nowadays and financing you know is a lot harder do you feel yeah i i don't think it was ever easy from the independent side of things whether it's five hundred thousand dollars or a hundred million you know, uh, raising the financing to and and working with all the entities involved to help take the risk and take the chance and helping finance something is uh, is always difficult. It has been from the very I, I can't remember a time it was ever remotely simple. That's for sure. Um, but with all the with the right partners involved, you know, your, your budgets can range. The, the budget I'm shooting with now is is certainly far greater than we had then, and mm. it just depends on the marketplace, the evaluation of the marketplace, the willing of the risk of the investor, whether you can pre-sell or get government funds to help with the with the financing of the film. Uh, there's so many variables involved, but yeah, it's it's exorbitantly difficult for sure in the independent space. Yeah. The and had was this the first time you've you've worked in australia you know with yeah, films absolutely yeah, yeah yeah absolutely it was the first time i'd been there and I, i'd never been there before i actually wrote the script without ever visiting so it was a lot of research wow. and understanding about the, the dingo and how the dingo uh you know the history of the dingo and and obviously the, the fairly polarizing uh viewpoint of dingoes in australia and particularly in the outback where yeah. you know, a lot of farmers don't like them and a lot of people Mm. are trying to protect them they are an endangered species at the moment in time and mm. uh considering their you know 10 15 000 year history in in the in australia mm. um it'd be a shame to see them uh, be decimated in any way shape or form oh, but yes. i understand that they can be a nuisance to a lot of people as well so it's typically a, a quite a polarizing uh subject matter i found in, in researching and also talking to people in, in the outback and you know in the city as well both both sydney queensland and wherever I was lucky enough to, to visit. Mm. Well, again, that leads me to, you know, working with children and animals. <laughs> How was mm. that experience? Yeah, you know, especially yeah, yeah. With, a, with a dingo. You must have, tell us about that. Well, it's not a dingo, it's, it's actually a Kelpie. And uh, you really can't work with a dingo. They're, they're a little unpredictable. And when you have a child actor, that's gonna be around that animal face to face a lot of the time it's really can be risky, you know, if the dog ever takes a nip at the boy, it causes him to cut him or scar his face, or, you know, mm. something happens that's, that, that's not predictable. And, and a dingo is really a wild animal. So, mm. you know, getting one and training one just didn't, it seemed counterintuitive to the sort of message of my film and, and you know, how, how humans interact with nature. Whereas a canine, a, a dog, of course, and in this, in this yeah. case being a Kelpie, they actually work very well on set and very much enjoy performing uh, uh, they're reward driven. They were treated with the most utmost respect through uh, through um, Zelly Bullen and her husband Craig Bullen and their team. We had five dogs, uh, three Kelpies that were rescued from an abusive situation, trained for the film, and uh, worked in the picture. And were constantly, you know, you know, you can tell when a dog is happy. They're very happy. Their tail is wagging. They're excited to be there. Yeah. And yeah. they, they love getting human, you know, accolades, reward and, and love of which Zelly gave to them in spades. So she is a phenomenal human being and someone I, I really uh, got along with very well, as well as her husband, Craig. And we were lucky to work with both the dogs and, and of course, with uh, Milan, who plays the boy Ridley in the yes. film. Yes, And yes. Uh, both was very lucky, you know, and I had no issue with the animals or, or, the, or the boy in the slightest in any way, shape or form. They were... They were completely professional. The dogs typically <laughs> do their job quite well, um, and mm. so we had a, we had a great experience with it. Oh, that's that's tremendous. Um, how was it working with all the um, actors, especially with Bill? 
great. Uh, Bill is a phenomenal yeah. a actor. As I think everyone who's seen him work is he's a great talent, but he's also a you know even more wonderful person. So he, he is extremely generous. He was extremely generous in working with Milan. They had a lot of scenes together, yeah. and uh, he opened up his his door to him and and worked with him a lot, helping him along. He's a young actor. He had not a lot of experience, and mm. frankly, he carries much of the film on his shoulders. So. Yeah. To get uh, a little wisdom from Bill and help from Bill, I think meant a great deal to Milan. He was extremely generous at every level and got along with the crew. Uh, I think he very much kind of fell in love with Broken Hill. It's it's a it's a sleepy little town. There's about 30,000 people, I believe, that live there. And uh, I think Bill really embraced that. I'm yeah. not sure he was totally positive uh, going into it because it was, it was an unknown for him. Yep. And uh, but he yeah, I think he pretty much fell hard for Broken Hill and I think he really enjoyed himself. But total gentleman and, and, yeah. and to direct, I mean a complete breeze. He's so prepared. Yeah. Um just makes my job a thousand times easier if he wasn't. But yeah, completely prepared, very generous, and uh got every nuance of the character. We had a lot of conversations before we started shooting. So during production it, it was it was actually quite easy with him. Oh, that's fantastic. So yeah, and all the all the cast, every one of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cast yeah, and crew. Kelton, Anthony, yeah. they were all uh all fantastic. Yeah, everybody who worked in that film. So are are you um looking to see if you can work here again with another I, story, I, Bill? I would leap at the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Anytime uh, I have the chance to get back there, I, I will uh, I will leap at that chance. No no question. Um and just working on a couple of new projects right now. Obviously, this will take my time right through till September. And then uh, I will write, begin writing again on, on a couple other films that I'm working on as well. But yeah, I would love to get out there any, any chance I can. Oh, fantastic. That's great to hear. Well, you know, we've been like the new Hollywood um, over here. In the yeah, special, so. yeah, and that's been you know it's been amazing to see you know the a lot of the productions that are getting made here and and of course it helps when yeah. we've got Chris Hemsworth, you know, living in you know back of Byron and there's a lot of Hollywood stars wanting to come and live in Australia now. Which yeah, yeah. well you've you've done very good with the COVID so it's um, yeah. I think that's been a big reason for it as well that it's. America was in very bad shape. Things will be turning around, certainly in the United States and, and in Canada. But yeah, yeah it's uh, it's a phenomenal production hub. You can do the city, you can do a country, you can pretty much cover any landscape, any geography, yep. and you can make any kind of film. You know, you don't need to make a George Miller, uh, Mad Max style film there anymore. You can pretty much do anything you want. Yeah, and this, the the crews are so sophisticated, so incredible to work with. Certainly, the best crew I've ever come across. It, you yeah. know, uh, from my DP to Ben Knott, right through to the grip and electric to every person on that crew, uh, the art director with Jacinta Leong, uh, just such talented people um, and, and just a joy to be around. I love every minute of it. Oh, that would, is would definitely come back. That is wonderful to hear. Yeah, I was the only Canadian uh, in a crew of, of about 80 people. I was the only Canadian there. So every, every single person on that crew was Australian. Wow. So uh, I was definitely the uh, the plum in a peach tree. Well, did you did you learn some really good Australian, you know, slang and words out out back <laughs> while you were there, Bill? Yeah, a couple, a couple, <laughs> definitely a few that were repeated in front of me. Some I can't say, but others were, uh, you know, certainly uh, done and dusted was a, a phrase that I heard a heck of a lot. And of course, Buckley's chance is pretty. Uh, yeah, was a phrase that we we like to use a lot for sure. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah, just the, the the friendliness of the people I found to be fantastic. Oh, that's that's um, wonderful. So the film is going to be released here very shortly, and June the twenty fourth. Yeah. Yes. Yes, across the, across the country, I believe. across the country. That's yeah, like now, just about um, next yeah, month. Yeah, soon, about a month from now. A month from now, and um, will it will it have a um, a re any sort of release over your part of the country? Yeah, yeah, in North America, theatrical is in August. The but the, we're going in Australia first because it's you know it, it yes. is uh, where it was shot and produced out of so yeah it'll be it's released there and then about a, two months after the release so about a month and a half after the Australian release it'll be released in North America 
Academ. Well, we've been absolutely delighted in talking to you, and I think this is a beautiful film. And I, yeah, I think you'll you'll have um, you know wonderful cinema attendance with this. I, I think, you know, it's it's been really interesting. And now in again COVID times, there's been a lot of support for the, you know, especially with Aussie type films being made here. Yeah, totally. And, yeah. yeah, indigenous films are, and are indigenous, doing very well in Australia right now. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You know, they're very well um, supported and and invited. You know, so. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to you know hearing you know the results of this and um, and we yeah and we hope you come back here, Bill, and make another film. Yeah, yeah, I hope so too. Absolutely, I really appreciate your time. Fantastic. Well, we appreciate your time too, and all the best with your new film. And say hello to Nick for me, please. I'm the oh, being a biggest fan forever. Oh, fantastic. Well, yeah. I'll, definitely, uh, I'll definitely let him know he's, he's loved in Australia. Yeah, tell him to bring him back with you with a film. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll talk to him. I'll definitely, I'll finish this one first and then we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll mention it. <laughs> fantastic. Well, thank you from Hush Hush Beers and, um, and all the best with Buckley's Chance. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Thank you.